Alright everybody, uh, part two of my devlog here, and what have I been working on in the meantime? Well, let me show you. I'm just going to run it really quick, and you'll notice probably right off the bat. Alright, so, look at that. He actually turns around. Let's just take him out here. So yeah, if you notice, they actually have different directions now. Uh, so what did I do? Well, let me t let me take you on a brief walk through here. Um, well, let's start with uh, the Kako Demon first, because this one's a little bit simpler, I think. No, all right, I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, I realized last time you couldn't really see my code, so uh, I'll try to make it a little bit bigger this time, so it'll actually capture. Um, <clears throat> so first thing you'll notice under here under load animation I have four animations here I have forward left right and back and what that is is forward is the sprite where he's facing toward you left is the sprite where he's facing left right is the sprite where he's facing right and back is the one where he's facing away from you and what do I do with these well up here uh, in the state where he is targeting you this one where I say play well I'll, I'll go over this first uh, what I do here is I call a function called get direction string and basically what that does is it pulls back a string of either forward left right or back and what it does is it, it basically takes the the rotations of both the monster and the player and it uh, like puts them it, it calculates to determine which direction it should be facing so what I do this is code right here this just determines let's see yeah this is going to determine the monsters uh, angle in relation to the player <clears throat> At least I think so. Yes, this 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 gets the direction uh, related to the player. So in here, zoom in. Here's the here's the function get direction string. Uh, this is a commented line I can delete because I don't use it anymore. So basically, what I do here is I have some math to tell me uh, yeah I guess the player angle basically it gets the like 360 degree angle of all of the uh, both the monster and the player so it comes I get like the uh, like the degrees of which they're facing and then down here I have a float called real angle and what this does is it it, it has this math equation right here by the way, these math things I got off the internet because I'm not a, I'm not Aristotle. I don't, I can't, <laughs> I can't just figure out these complicated math functions here on my own. So I just got, I just looked up, you know, basic formulas, how to find the distance of angle, how to get the degrees, and blah blah. blah. But uh, what I do is I calculate the difference between the angles. So it's like, if if a uh, player is facing 90 degrees and the monster is play facing 80 degrees then the difference is 10 degrees so it's a 10 degree difference so um, and down here I determine I determine the distance of the degrees to determine this and here's how it works let me open up paint here just to show you so, let's see, yeah, this works. All right, so you have your 360 degree wheel here. Let's just say this one's the enemy, this one's the player. So if the player is facing, say, if he is facing uh, 180, like say this, like this is zero, this is 180, this is, 90 this is 270 
So if the player is facing 180 and the monster is also facing 180, I can draw here. The monster is also facing 180, then it should bring back the the sprite where he's facing away from you. This is just how it works. It'll never be the other way around. You, you, you may ask me like, well, what happens if the monster is behind you and you're facing the same direction? Well, you'll never see him behind you, so it doesn't matter. So this is correct. Likewise, let me just take that out. If the player is facing 180 and the monster is facing like zero, like that, then play the sprite that he's facing toward you. Also, if the player is facing uh, 180, and this is 90, so it's a 90 degree difference, then play the one that's to the right. Now this complicates things a little bit, because if I'm facing 180, and the difference is 90, how does it know if it's facing this way or that way? Well, that's another thing I had to take into account, and another thing that caused me some trouble when trying to figure this out. Because if we go back here, you'll notice I have this here. Um, by the way, this is where I determine if the angle, if the difference in angles is less than 45, then return. Uh, it should be returning the back, but I'll explain why it, it's not in a second. Um, either way, th this says if it's facing less than 45, then he's facing away. If it's facing less than 135 or in between 45 and 135 then it's facing to the side and how I determine which side is I actually just say if the if the player's angle is less than or should be greater than the monster's angle you know that kind of formula that, that's how I determine which direction he's facing but this brings in a new problem and I'll show you so if he's if the player is facing 180, then it's not a problem. Uh, you don't run into this problem because if the monster is facing this way, so if the player is 180 and the monster is 90, then then the monster's angle is less than the player's. Uh, likewise, if the monster is facing this way, the monster is 270, the player is 180, then the monster's angle is greater than the player. And so you say if the monster's angle is greater than the player, then and he's facing, you know, within that range, then he's facing to the left of the player. But let's make this more complicated, which is the problem I ran into. If the player is facing like like ten degrees, let's say. The player's facing this way. And the monster is facing, say, like 300 degrees. Like that. Just pretend like the monster is in front of the player. Then it should be facing to the right. It should play the right image, or load the right image. Well, uh, it goes against what we said earlier because if the monster's angle, it's supposed to be if the monster's angle is less than the player's, he'd face right. But the monster's angle is 300 and minus 10. So that brings in another issue. And this is another thing I had to account for, which was a pain. You'll notice these where I'm saying if the player angle is within this range and the monster's angle is within this, within this range. What this, what this if statement right here basically does is it says if the player's angle... So in other words, first it determines if the, mon if the monster is 90 degrees you know, in relation to the player. Then, and also if the player's angle is like... Uh, just a second. It was like with within this quadrant right here. So if if you remember in math class, you had quadrant one, two, three, and four. So if the player's angle is in quadrant one and the monster's angle is in quadrant four, then he should be facing to the right. And then the opposite way for the left one. If if the player's angle is you know, down here and the monster's is up here, then if the player is in quadrant four, monster's angle is in quadrant one. Then 
then it should be facing to the left. Otherwise, if neither of those are true, then just take whether the player's angle is greater or less than the monster's. So that was a big nightmare process, having to go figure all this out and trying to get all this done. But thankfully I got it. So another issue I ran into after all this, getting all this sorted out, is the calculation I was using to get the monster rotation. The angle of the monster would always be like 90 degrees off. So if I loaded, if I did everything like I was supposed to do, where I loaded it, I, or if it's, if the monster's facing the same angle as the player, and I tried to load the back one that way, the back sprite, instead it would load the one where he's facing to the left. And so it's like, if he's looking toward you, he's actually facing to the right. If he's moving to the right, it'll show that he's facing toward you, which is weird. So I actually had to change the strings here to, to kind of like sort of rotate the monster 90 degrees to get him to face the right direction. So that's why instead of back, it's left. That's why instead of the sides, it's forward and back. And then right down here. This is just, yeah. And, and once this string comes back, once it returns one of these strings, and it comes back here, I put it into this variable called direction string. And then down here under the play animation, I just load that variable, direction string. And depending on what comes back, it'll load one of these sprites, forward, left, right, or back. And the result, uh, let me just do this. I'm going to get rid of his code for moving to make him, basically make him stationary. Just make sure. No, it should be zero. Okay. So now, if we go and take a look in the game, oh, come on, too slow. So if you notice, he's facing toward me right now. If I move this way, now he's facing to the right. Move this way, now he's facing to the back. I should face toward me for a second. Oh, that's something I gotta fix. He's facing to the back. Move this way, facing to the left, and he's facing toward me again. Um, now this, I think I know what's going on here. I have, I probably have to fix something with the angle. I have to change some of the angles very slightly. If you remember the ones where I'm determining whether it's in the right quadrant, like if I'm in quadrant one, he's in quadrant four, I just have to jimmy the angle slightly to make it, you know, fit. But otherwise, if I just circle around him here, it'll he'll face the right direction. So now you you can tell he's facing like this direction because as I move around him, he turns he turns the direction, right? I'm just messing around here. <laughs> okay. So that's how that works. Um, actually, I have, I have some things here I can show, actually. Because if you watch... Because I have some, some, uh, some variables that I can actually show right here. Alright, so notice down here. If I can show down here. I have angle... Angle is the difference between the angles. Monster angle, player angle. All right, so you can actually see what's going on. So you can see my angle right now is about 300. His is 256. So, wait. Right. Yeah, this is what I was talking about with the thing where I had to rotate it, but you can see what's going on. We have the, if I move this way, yeah, you can, you can see the numbers moving down there. His angle never moves, never moves, but you can see mine change. Let's see, here's where it messes up. See, 
I'm at 32, and this is this is the zero right here. Okay. So it's like I'm at zero, and now I'm at 360. So that's that's what complicates everything. But uh, you can see that in the angle column, that's you know calculating the distance between our different angles. Okay. Now once I was done with that, uh, I felt very accomplished, and I did it. I took it a step further. I added something called get direction string octal. What this does is this is the same thing as this. The only difference is I added diagonal directions or isometric direction, whatever you want to call it. So now you have forward left, back left, forward right, back right. And those are the different corners. And this one I used for the soldier. Because if you notice, I added new animations. Because I have walk forward, walk left, walk right, walk back, walk forward left, walk back left, walk forward right, walk back right. And I do it basically the same way as I did the Cacodemon, where I say play animation, walk, underscore, and then the variable direction string. So let me, let me cripple this guy as well so I can show off what I'm doing. Uh, I'm also going to uh, take out his shooting, just so he'll s stay still. And I'll show off what he does. Come on. So he's, he's moving toward me right now. If I run around him, he changes the direction. So as I move around him, he actually, his, his animation actually changes. His underlying animation actually changes depending on what direction we're both facing. So this works the same way as the Kako Demon, just with eight directions instead of four directions. And that's, that's literally all it is, is just it's the same thing as I was doing with the Kaku Demon. I just added four more directions and made the angles more precise to get the directions. So now I can circle around him and he will change his animation depending on which direction we're both facing. So this is very good. This was probably one of the things I was worried most about coding but it didn't actually take that long. Is that a glitch where his eyes are like blue? Is it supposed to be like that? Yeah. So now we can just shoot this guy. Okay. By the way, I, he slides around on the ground for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know if somebody familiar with Unity can tell me why this is, but for some reason he just slides around. I don't. He's like a, a sliding dead body. This guy doesn't do that. But I, and I'm doing them the exact same way. The only difference is this guy uses a sphere collider and this guy uses a box collider. I don't know if that makes a difference. But anyway, we can just take this guy out. Uh, I fixed the Kako Demon animation, by the way. But uh, I think that's about it. I think that's all I have to show you right now. That's what I've been working on since then. Now that I have the directions and everything worked out, I can start working on adding different guns and different enemies and different types of projectiles and things like that. The bike the bike is never going to go away. The bike will always be here. Uh, but anyway, I'll fix the spread a little bit too. But I'm not really that noticeable. But uh, anyway, I think that's it for now. So I guess I will make more updates later. So bye bye.